like uh, there's times where I, I'll step outside in the scooter and I'm like, man, people think I'm this fat, lazy man who, who just doesn't want to walk. And that that <laughs> thought lasts for like a minute. And that's it. I'm just enjoying my life. I'm cruising. I'm literally I'm cruising. I'm I'm enjoying it. So I can't I, I'm sorry, babe, but I cannot live my life. I like am that. a very so a great thing that we need to learn in life is to understand ourselves. And I am a very tightly wound person. I've been told that my entire life. Mm. And I, I've come to accept it. And then I've come to learn how to release, you know, control and all these things. But it's a learning process. But I just felt so self-conscious about posting it. But I'm going to post it tonight. So hold me accountable. There you go. Um, but it was about marriage. And it was dispelling some of the lies that we hear about marriage. Among mm -hmm. those is that it's my spouse's responsibility to make me happy. Mm -hmm. To fulfill everything. And if that were true, that would make you God. My I God. Had that, I had that problem very, uh, like, throughout our marriage. And even up until this situation. Um, and then he found out that I actually am that amazing. So it was all good. But <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, though, um, I've I've always just laid myself under the assumption that your happiness is my responsibility. Oh, yes. But there are just honestly and for those that are listening, those that are watching, um, maybe you're about to get married or you are married and you feel like you're dealing with the problem right now with a with a cranky spouse and, and a bad face. <sighs> you your spouse's happiness you cannot control it sometimes your your spouse is just having a bad day and there's not much you can do to 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 take them out of it um but i do agree that i can still try my best to make you feel better yeah does that make sense yeah, because I think that's part of caring for someone. It's normal to, you know, if it's a family member or a spouse. Um, but since we're talking about marriage here, like, I think yeah. it's normal to see your spouse down. And I do it all the time. I'm guilty of it, too. But I think it's normal. Guilty of what? Trying to change my my, my mood? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get you to snap out of it yeah. or wanting to fix it. I, I think that's honorable. I mean, yeah, that's you, sweet. you want to love your spouse. Gosh, if you didn't care or, like, your right. heart wasn't even moved when you saw your spouse looking sad, then... I'd argue that sounds kind of like a really sad up. marriage right there. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Um, but I think that's normal. But I think we we've come to learn that when you're in your mood or I'm going through my thing, like sometimes you just give the person space and you pray and you say, God, yeah. you know, give me the words or, you know, help them out here or like, I don't know. <laughs> it's funny because I think if you if I spent all my time trying to take away your sadness and only make you happy. It's funny because you are the one that says this all the time because it, it makes me mad when it doesn't work. And then you get upset. You're like, well, Daniel, both of us can't be upset. I mean, you're kind of right. No, we, so I say, we say jokingly all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always a joke when she says it, but yeah. it's the truth though. Like what's the point of, you know, both people rampaging in a house angry. I know? always say like only one of us can be mad and I, I've already called it. So, <laughs> You're going to have to simmer down. No, we say out of the joke, but in all honesty, we kind of do follow yes, that it's rule. Not too, it's not that bad. It's not that bad of a rule to follow. Even. Yeah, like I don't think we said it. Like it's it's not set in stone, but like we totally follow that rule. Yeah. And the thing is like when you're dealing like we are with a chronic illness, um, like, you know, going back to what I was saying that this last couple of months have been really hard, like the last six weeks or two months. Yeah. Um, we Because we, we had that trip to New York, which – as much as it, we rested, because believe it or not, like, I don't think Daniel felt rested, but like, I, re I rest when I get out of my environment. Like this coming week for Thanksgiving, we're trying to go not. to Georgia. Daniel, wh what, wh how do you rest? Well, obviously, like, and when I say rest, I'm not talking about like sleeping. I'm like, what rejuvenates you? Because for um, me, getting out of my environment and like going to New York, that actually rejuvenated me because I like experiences. I I am a bit of a homebody. Like sometimes you do just need to be home mm -hmm. and rest and like chill. But other times, like I really do want to be out and about. I want to go to Disney. I want to go here. I, like I don't like staying in all that much. So th does that work for you? Or like are you different? No, I'm different. Sense? I need to stay in. The house has to be clean and I have to be home. Yeah, that's that's what rest is for me. But stop, because you love going out. Well, I, maybe not that's anymore. changed. Yeah, that has changed yeah, a no, bit. No, not anymore. It's well, crazy. But but sometimes you like it too, like getting out and just being in a different. Yeah, if environment. it's been if it's been too long, 
Um, I want to like, oh, let's just go, let's just go to downtown or something like that. Um, but I don't want to take uh, this huge trip and like that New York trip. I had to, I was recovering for like a week after that trip. Mm -hmm. It was, it was bad, but. And that just goes to show how much life has changed. Yeah. Since, because I, we were both very much the same in that aspect of like, that's how we rejuvenated reconnected as a marriage like we loved adventures right i think like it was we drove to new york less, we yeah drove less to than DC. a month after a honeymoon we were in another like spontaneous yeah, trip we drove to, to new york drove to dc drove to georgia drove to tennessee and every time like i would drive because i don't trust carla's driving um as but shouldn't. i would drive and and i i like we'd get to the cabin or we'd get to the hotel and i'd be like oh this is amazing this is wonderful now it's just that sounds exhausting i'll do it because i know that i'm gonna enjoy the memories of those things and what we're going through is only a phase in our lives so that's why i still i'm still gonna do these things because i'm gonna be able to look back at this time and say well i'm glad i still did it but it's gonna be exhausting in the meantime that's yeah. just kind of like my life motto right now yeah and so because of that trip it was just and it was exhausting for me too because now i i do like i Worry now just being married lot. yeah not yeah. It, not just being married but like with what we're going through i have to take on more responsibility of like okay what's our flight number what gate are we supposed to be at like i have to do all of that um while daniel's just trying to focus on driving the Medical scooter and having and his machine like with him yeah. and all that stuff so it, it's hard and definitely when you go through something like this with chronic illness the roles i'm not going to say are, are reversed but roles do there's change shift, there yes. is a shifting and there's a constant communication about those shifts and it's not easy because i think when you start and i think that happens regardless to whether there's an illness i think that happens Just in marriage with, in general with like the when you have the kids seasons. when mm -hmm. you have like a, a a parent is sick or like you know you you're having to become a caretaker now for maybe an elderly parent things shift and, and a marriage has to be able to adjust yeah i think just Healthy with one. yeah the shifting of seasons and stuff responsibilities are for sure yeah going to change and you know but with us it happened a lot sooner and in a lot more drastic ways unfortunately yeah yeah like what, what do you think are some of those daniel some of what that some of those like responsibilities in our marriage that we had when we were when we first got married and how things are having to look different now for the sake of our sanity or things like that definitely i feel like you um i mean you can correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like before i got sick and everything you always considered me the protector slash provider um not in regards to monetary value but as the man in the house you always i think you always saw me as protector and provider and now I feel like that shifted um, a lot. Not that necessarily you are the protector and provider, but now it's a joint thing. Like now you feel like, okay, where I was able to sit back, eat some grapes while he protected and provided. <laughs> now I have to, I oh know it's a joke. You weren't never, you're now not I'm a like lazy person or anything. Like. Grapes. The There's shit. some in the fridge. Um, anyways, so random. <laughs> um, but now uh, now it's kind of a, a joint thing. It's not that I get to sit back and eat grapes while you protect and provide. But where I have the energy, I have to come through. And where I don't have the energy, you have to pick up. So that's and, definitely changing that dynamic. And it can change from day to day. Literally, because <laughs> yeah. you guys have no idea how sporadic my my um, my energy levels are. I mean, it, 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 I I. I can't even like keep up. one day he wants to clean out the garage and then another day he sleeps eight hours. Yeah, it's really weird. It, it, and it all just depends on so many things. Mm -hmm. But like but I will even say you've been having health struggles, obviously, since February of 2021 when yeah. he fell ill with COVID and, and, and lost renal function. Mm -hmm. But since May, we've been on the struggle train, mm -hmm. on the struggle bus because his he started having issues with blood pressure, but now these issues as well. And then the last few weeks have been extremely hard because he's been throwing up everything he eats and stuff. And um, some of the things that I've noticed just recently in the last couple of weeks is, um, you know, I've really had to keep up with like groceries, which I could tell him to do groceries all the time for me and I wouldn't have to worry about it. I've had to get more on top of that um, so that we have what we need. Um, I've been like for months, I just can't cook. Um, 
that sounds a bit random, but like I don't have time to well, even cook. I, for those that are you or know, I'm exhausted. listening, it's not that she doesn't cook at all. Um, it's just that now we're she's we're buying food a little more because you still do cook a lot. Yeah, I do. You I do. do like a I'm, few times a week. Yeah. But like like I and it has been since this whole thing happened. Like especially I used to breakfast. Cook I'm sorry. Multiple I have, times to, I have to correct week. that because I don't want you to make yourself look bad. You make breakfast for yourself every day. Like, listen, this is the age of the modern woman. It's okay if I don't cook. I'm yeah, kidding. no, it is I'm okay kidding. if you don't cook. But I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying I don't want you to make it seem like well. Oh yeah, no, like I still cook. Yeah, but like there are some days where I'm ex- I am so exhausted, and it's not. It's not. And just I know physically. we are not guilty. I know there's a bunch of people that are. Y'all know. Yeah, y'all know. Y'all know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's just it gets so busy with like medical appointments and things like that, oh my and then gosh, yeah. my work schedule is a little bit different too. Like some days I work till seven p.m. and it's it's just it's a lot and so i've had to take responsibilities like when we first got married too daniel did all of the bills and now i pay i do all of that because he, yeah. he can forget if i'm okay to say that mm-hmm. um you know just because of covid and everything he has memory issues and which is fine um there are some days that i do get really angry um because i forget to pay things i've, I've been always very forgetful person um daniel jokes about it all the time he says it's because i'm so smart that i'm thinking about other things it's not a joke. I, so I honestly sweet. think that. Uh, you do really? Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. <laughs> I think I think you're so you're so um keen in in so many areas and of intelligence that you kind of don't have space for a, a lot of other simple things. Like there's a Are you all there. taking notes, fellas? Like he's giving you subtle keys right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I focus on too many things. I that that's honestly what you're saying yeah. in kind of words. <laughs> yeah. I try to focus on too much at once and then I end up forgetting half of the things I was supposed to do. Yeah, but yeah. It's okay. Um, Not half. Yeah, like few, you used though. to do all of that before. And I didn't even know I didn't even have the login um oh to God. any of our accounts. Um, like I had like our and bank account and my phone and stuff, but this guy is like sedated and intubated and like out for the count, um, you know, in the ICU. And I had no idea how to pay uh, any yeah, of our yeah, bills. Yeah. And thank God he had most of them automated. If not, I would have been sitting in here in the dark <laughs> without paying for anything. But I literally had no idea. Oh, and, and what happened was, is that you had it my in your phone. phone. Yeah. He had all, which I don't know that that's. A great idea, but it, it definitely worked out this time. Of course, time. it's a great idea. Well, what if someone steals your phone? Then what they're gonna what are they gonna pay my light bill for me? <laughs> you have other things too. Like what? I I oh, had the mortgage, right. the 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 light. Well, the mortgage the water, that I don't know. Then yeah, I, that's true. The most they could do is pay our bill. <laughs> that's true. I didn't think. I didn't have my, I didn't have our social there. No. And then why would I call the light company and be like, "Hey, can you tell me my social?" <laughs> <laughs> annoying <laughs> it's true it's true but anyways that's how i was able to pay the bills and stuff yeah. but like as you can see when when you're going through this shift of chronic illness like the roles are shifting yeah. constantly um and it's hard sometimes it's like whiplash like you, you it, and a mm-hmm. little bit discombobulating it's hard to keep up yeah um there's con there has to be constant communication and it can get frustrated like frustrating i think yes. there's times when we've gotten frustrated with each other because there's just so much constant change it's not even the rules like i'm not even talking about that anymore Mm-mm. it's just, it's just life the changes. constant changes in our lives yeah. in our lifestyle and oh we could do this before now we can't do it oh wait we can do it again <laughs> like oh let, i'm gonna give you like a great that. example of roller coaster and i'm not mm-hmm. talking about like a little roller coaster i'm talking about like or like Mount Everest. i'm not talking about like emotional roller Space coaster Mountain. Like yeah, I'm talking about coaster. like we we have Disney annual passes that were gifted to us. Yeah. Um and thanks, Mom. yes, thanks mother-in-law. It was awesome. Este <laughs> I'm over here in Spanish. <laughs> um no, but um so Daniel could ride roller coasters mm-hmm. um a few months back. There's no issues there. And then now we get the annual passes cuz we we went to Disney twice um we were invited um, and we went to Disney twice and then we loved it so much. That's what they, that when the annual passes were gifted to us. But those prior times that we went, Daniel could do roller coasters just fine. No issues, no worries. Yeah. We're great. Um, he has a dialysis catheter in his belly, which is fine to go on a roller coaster with. There's no issues. But now um, he has for the second time a catheter. And if you're watching on YouTube, he is showing it right here. He has a catheter in his chest in case he needs to go back to hemodialysis. Um, and with that, 
honestly wouldn't ask if I he could ride roller coasters, roller coasters, but we've come to terms that he can't just to be safe. Um, I don't think it'd be, a, I think it'd be dumb, honestly. If it we is, try to ride a roller coaster. It is coaster. a needle, not a needle, but it's a, it's a Foley, a catheter, a tube that lands like. No, it's not a Foley. The Foley's the urinary. Foley. Oh, sorry. It's the a, one it's that a. You get. <laughs> My people, bad. people are going what the heck did they a, put in this dude's chest it's a catheter <laughs> that follows a close um uh blood pathway right here and it lands like right next to my heart so it's, the tip of it is inside your heart yeah so we want to be like let's not jar my whole body around so <laughs> yeah let's not cause a heart attack or yeah, something let's not stab any more than i need to <laughs> um so i'm able to do like you know chill things but just it's any crazy roller coasters i'm not doing after all that's uh, just about all you can do but i will tell you this <laughs> when we go you know if i'm feeling up to it i'm gonna fight i'm gonna kick i'm gonna scream and my family pretty much gives in all the time anyway messed up man <laughs> but anyways yeah you you can't ride roller you can ride roller coasters i was mm-hmm. talking to a star mm-hmm. um but that's been a bummer and see like things like that is what we're talking about like constant changes of like you could now you can't now you're allowed and it's just it, we really do get whiplash yeah like i i literally get tension headaches from the, like the tenseness i have in my neck and it's difficult days. because um as a as a marriage we want to plan in advance we want to um like have strategy set in place there's like there there's future there's a future that we we love thinking about and it's it's difficult to think past a week, maybe two, because we do not know what's going to change. We don't know what's going to happen. And um, I think that's created a lot of um, tension and not that we're upset at each other, mm-hmm. um, but we're frustrated at the situation, which I believe you said that earlier already. Um, and I, I also think that's a really good point for most marriages. Um, I, I'm not saying that maybe you are going through maybe a severe health struggle like we are. Um, but I'm also not saying that if you are going through something a bit minor, that it's minor at all. So like maybe you're just struggling, um, because you guys aren't meeting eye to eye. That's still a struggle and that's fine. Um, maybe you guys need to take a step back and understand that you're not upset at the spouse or your spouse. You're upset at the situation. Um, maybe finances aren't the best. Um, and maybe it's not because your spouse is always going on a spending spree every other week or because you guys, uh, don't want to cook and you're always eating out. Maybe it's just because you guys are both in phases at work where, um, you are building up to something, but you're not there yet. As far as a monetary value goes, understand that you're not fighting each other, that you're fighting together. Does that make sense? It does. And I'm really glad you said that. I think people need to understand that. If you're going through something really hard like this, and it could be something else, it could be like infant loss, it could be pregnancy loss, job loss. It could be detrimental to, you know, uh, emotional states. We have a great episode, and and if I remember, because I I have to give that caveat. Did I say that correctly? Yeah, caveat. I have to give that disclaimer because... (laughs) She changed the word. (laughs) I gave up. (laughs) She straight up up. gave up. (laughs) Two seconds in. (laughs) No, because then I'll listen back to this and be like, what right. did you say? Huh? You said it right. Caveat. caveat. Yeah. Okay. So I have to give that caveat that I do forget <laughs> to link stuff all the time, no, but sorry. it's okay. Um, but we do have one of our episodes. If you want to scroll down to one of our first episodes we did on grief, mm-hmm. um, we can grieve many things. I'm, I don't like it when people are like, get over it. Yes. Sometimes we need a, like that little pat in the butt and move on yeah um because if not if it's unhealthy to stay like stuck somewhere but Mm -hmm. we don't need to get over things we need to go through them and i've learned that in this season because that was me i was a person that would tell a friend or a family member move on get over it you're fine um shake it off but that's not always the healthy option it's okay you're stuck there and it's not your fault you need to get through it Mm -hmm. um what we're going through, we've had to learn that we ha- we just got to get through it. And so whatever you're going through, I, we just want you to know that it's okay if you're feeling sitting there feeling frustrated and angry. Yeah. But I love what Daniel said. You guys are a team. Yeah. You're in a marriage, you are a team. It's not, you know, this, you know, don't tell your spouse, just get over it. You know, pray about how you can help them through it, Um, especially if you're dealing with grief. And like I mentioned, there's many things that could cause us to grieve in our lives so that we have to go through the grieving process. You can't skip over the grieving process. There are like, you know, the five steps of the grieving process. Hmm. 
you just got to, you know, get through it. You know, some people get quicker through the process than others, mm -hmm. but you have to be patient with your spouse and understand that it, like we, we say all these things because we, I, you know, I got we that message. Yeah. And I got that message on Instagram the other day and there was a couple who are going through a very similar experience to us in terms of dialysis. Yeah. They're in their thirties and the husband is now on dialysis and she, the wife has been dealing with him having blackouts and mm -hmm. things like that. And it's, you know, she just said, thank you for sharing your story like you do, because I needed that. Yeah. And to be able to have other people relate to our story, that's why we do this. You know, it mm -hmm. takes work and effort, but we do it because we know there's people just like us in the struggle bus. And so we can all, I don't know, struggle together. sing Kumbaya <laughs> together. So I'm not kidding. But like we, we can go through it together and you can feel like seen. I think it's really yeah. hard when you go through something like this and you don't feel seen. Yeah.